actually master soy samples. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> you're looking nope, at nope. him like you're looking at him like she's cooking them. <laughs> like number ten, like, number seven. That's a very very small portion. Of like, are they done yet? Samples. When do I get to try them? Can, can I get the analysis now? <laughs> So Rock River Laboratory uh, was established in 1976 by my dad, Don Meyer, on my grandparents' farm. And uh, it started as a standalone soil laboratory. In the first year, he only did 300 samples. So uh, now where we're, we're standing uh, is, is a state-of-the-art facility that uh, we run 150, 200,000 soil samples per year. I'm Zach Meyer. I'm uh, Director of Operations for Rock River Laboratory. Uh, we are a feed and forage analysis laboratory and we've also got an agronomic side where uh, we analyze soil and plant tissue and fertilizer and manure. Uh, we've been built from a family base. Uh, my father still runs the company and is very much involved. And uh, we try to maintain those core values with our customers and, uh, and, and take innovation to the industry in the best way we can. So we're, Zach we're back here where the samples come in. Yes. And um, and so sample comes into the lab every morning. Gets samples in from from the mail and what have you. Yes. Okay. Comes in and then what what happens to it? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to put a, a lab number on the on the package. Okay. And that lab number is associated with whether or not it's an NIR or wet chemistry sample. Uh, we run two different sample flows through the facility here in Watertown and uh, that's also a matter uh, or a, a way that we can track uh, quality control as well because uh, that's our internal uh, identifier for a sample as well as uh, a identifying mark for our customers as, as, as well. After the sample's dried, it comes through this grinding process and each one of the samples gets ground into almost a fine powder. Uh, and, and after that, then it's either filled into an NIR disc or uh, put through our wet chemistry lab. So, so, I, so, so after they grind it, yes. we're, looking, we're looking at something like this. Looking at the, the powder sample, and so um, from this point, it's, it's either going to be filled into an NIR disc or uh, sent back through the wet chemical lab. Okay. So um, the NIR, we probably do about 85% of our samples by NIR. Uh, wet chemistry makes up the other 15. Okay. How, um, will it take all of this? Um, no, it's, uh, it's a small portion. Um, you just scoop with a, uh, with a kitchen spoon and, and put it into a disc. Uh, it's it's only a couple of grams. But you'll keep these cataloged, right? Yeah. So if a guy yeah. wanted to come back and look at something. Yep. So we we keep those cataloged uh, for several months. We actually keep the live sample or the original sample for about a oh. week. Okay. This is an NIR disc, and we take the dried and ground sample and fill this uh, this disc with the sample, and then feed it through the NIR. So what Ryan's doing here is uh, he's loading up uh, discs with the dried and ground sample and then uh, feeding it on the ramp to the NIR. You're the one who takes pictures of my samples. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is the cool lab. This yes. Cool lab. Yeah, this is the cool lab. This is, what, this, this is cool stuff. <laughs> so we, we saw the NIR. Yes. And so if a sample goes NIR that goes there and it gets it gets, it gets NIR'd, yep. and, um, and, then, and then and the results are built off of that, and Correct. it comes out to report. 
for those guys who are doing who are doing chemistry though, wet chemistry stuff, this is this is where the sample would go. Correct. So this is our wet chemical lab. Uh, most of the equipment that you're going to be seeing in here is is uh, less than four years old. Uh, okay. We try to keep on top of innovation nice. and and uh, technology. Um, actually, this piece of equipment right here is uh, courtesy of, of your suggestion, so uh, we're pretty proud of that. Um, we too. run individual sugars on here, so uh, so it, it, you know we really listen to uh, what our customers need and, and want, and try catering our services to that. Definitely, definitely. No, I think that's one of the things that I really appreciate working with Rock River about is, is how you how you can sit down, talk through, and and figure out the best way to do stuff, and and, and the best way that's the best way for you and the best way for us to get the kind of stuff that we need. Well, it's truly, uh, you know, we need to listen to our customers. Uh, if we don't listen to our customers, we end up getting ourselves mired in, you know, minutia because we sit behind a desk. Yeah. And so uh, when when we have customers come to us with a suggestion, it's it's oftentimes uh, a very good one, and, and we try to implement it. So after after sample goes through all that process, and then the, the information is um, is collected, and and we get and we get a we get a report. We can get those reports uh, on our phones. We can get it through the app. We can get those reports online. We can get them. I, I get them emailed to me. Right. In, you know. And so so there's there's people in the back typing all that stuff in and sending it out. Right. Right. So uh, one the one thing that we do uh, it, as a matter of quality control is we actually look at each one of the samples and make sure that it makes nutritional sense before okay. we send it out. Uh, yeah, we're a lot of attention to detail in that whole yeah. process because uh, it's it's valuable data on the on the analysis reports that we're sending out and we want to make sure that it's right the first time. Yeah. So so talking about this that uh, comprehensive nutritional package, we'll talk to John about that and we'll see if he can explain that, you know, a little bit more about what's on that for us. Absolutely. Sound check, sound check. Mark is a handsome young man. Yes. Um, so we, we've been here at Rock River today. We're, we're now sitting down with uh, John Gazer, Dr. John Gazer. John, kind of explain your role here at, at Rock River Force. Sure, so I, I consider myself the, the glue between our clients, uh, wherever they might be, and uh, a laboratory, uh, our technicians and, and our capabilities. I, I really seek to identify what the industry needs or what our, our clientele or prospective clientele may be needing and then identifying the right thing from Rock River's portfolio that might fit and help out ultimately farm and producer profitability but by way of our, our clients. Good deal. So one one of the things that's that's kind of new here and that you have you've spearheaded is the uh, the new um, comprehensive nutritional package that a guy can get on a, on a forage sample. So, um, you know, Zach and I were talking about that a little bit, but it, it kind of explain, explain how that's important and how guys can use that and, and, and what's in that now that wasn't in some other things. Sure. Animal nutrition and more specifically ruminant nutrition is, has just gotten, uh, gotten and grown to a point where it's incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. If I think about uh, my, my nutrition, I couldn't even tell you what my protein intake was yesterday or, or in the last few weeks let alone what uh, my amino acid intake was and grams of amino acids, right. but we're to that level with, with animal nutrition. Uh, on our Cheerios box, we have maybe protein, starch, uh, some, some sugars, maybe some fiber, and then ultimately we, we go after calories. And in ruminant nutrition, it's, it's not much different in that we're trying to estimate calories available to the animal mm -hmm. uh, for, for health and performance and growth and gains but the way we get to calories is a little bit more convoluted in that we need to understand both nutrient content for example starch but then also understand degradability uh, within the rumen primarily uh, so for example starch digestion so it with our more comprehensive nutrition analysis we've expanded on uh, in investigating further understanding both rumen fiber and starch digestion we've also uh, transitioned to moving away from just fat as a nutrient, but now specifically looking at fatty acids. Yep. And we've even crossed a bridge into doing some amino acid analyses on feed. So we're we're really looking at a number of different areas nutritionally of that the the feed stuff, whether it be a grain or a forage or a TMR. But then, uh, in, and hence the name comprehensive, bringing it into one spot so that our 
uh, nutritionists and farmers uh, and, and key industry influencers uh, like yourself and Master's Choice can make use of that information. We, we talk, you and I talk a lot about nutrition because that's kind of the, the world that we, that we somewhat live in. And, and it, at the same time as we're connecting those dots between academia, the lab, the nutritionist, the farmer, uh, the, the, the seed provider, the, you know, characterizing the forage, there, there's also an, another side to that. Dots to be connected on farm. Dots to be connected on farm, especially with agronomics, you know. We can, uh, you know, we, I can run all the nutritional tests on a, on a hybrid that there are to run and categorize it right down to the, to the nth degree. And have and have the best thing nutritionally, but if it doesn't match up agronomically, you know. So I've got to have I've got to have my agronomic team, and and that's what's really cool about about here at Rock River. You you know y'all you all are putting that that same story together. So you got the soils lab and the tissue testing and all of those agronomic things, and and how and how that affects how that affects the the uh, the, the nutrition of the plant as as you as we bring those together. Yeah, and so I've enjoyed opportunity one to learn from my agronomy teammates uh, and soil science teammates here at Rock River, but also within the industry to interact with, with your team and, and other seed consultants and advisors uh, and agronomists and really learn. There, there are great things to be learned from everybody involved that, yeah. that's influencing and helping the farmers along because really the, we, we're speaking of dairy and dairy nutrition, but dairy farms are also growers. Yes, they are. Uh, virtually all of them, yep. uh, except in the circumstances where they're contracting feed. So I, it's, it's fascinating to me how soil health and nutrition can impact plant nutrition and then Subsequently, that'll that'll impact forage quality, definitely nutrient availability. Yeah, we we need to continue better working together collectively, and hopefully, uh, continue breaking down walls between agronomists, crop consultants, and then nutrition and management consultants. So one of the pillars that we're built on, uh, core value, is, is customer service, and, and that's something that has been passed down from, from my dad and, and uh, Twyla Kulo, who was uh, our Forage Lab Director previously. Um, she passed on uh, with a, after a bout with cancer a couple of years ago, but um, they, they really kind of set the stage for customer service. And we don't want the, the analysis or the interaction to end when you get back the report. We want to engage our customers and, and um, try finding as much value as we can in our reports and, and uh, ultimately make a difference on, on dairies across the world.